After defining curves and vector fields on R3, now we are ready to prepare our tools to discuss the geometry of curves in R3. Now our first tool that we will that we are going to define in this module is vector fields on curves in R3. Now what is this uh, idea? So far we have defined what is a vector field on R3 which gives us a vector at each and every point on R3. Now if we restrict that uh, vector field to any given subset, so in this particular case if we restrict that vector field to any given curve, okay, so this curve then we say that it is a vector field on that curve. So what is a vector field on a curve alpha? So it is a function that assigns to each number t in i a tangent vector y of t to r3 at point alpha of t. So let's say this is the curve alpha and at any uh, value of t, okay, so if we take any parameter value, let's say t naught, then alpha of t naught is going to be some number on the curve and at this particular point on the curve, this y is going to give me a vector, so which is y of t naught. Of course, it depends on the parameter because as you change the value of the parameter, these vectors are going to be different. So this y is a function of the parameter t. So the same value of parameter is going to give me alpha of t naught, which is the point of application. And this y of t naught is going to give me this vector. Now let's have a look at some of the examples. Now the examples are uh, very trivial and we have seen then uh, these uh, examples, for example, in our calculus course as well. So given this curve alpha which is basically a circle of radius 1 in the plane and uh, defined in the following way then we can find uh, the following vector field on the curve which is kind of very obvious so what are we calculating we are calculating the velocity vector okay so just take the derivative of this first and second component and the third component and the point of application is alpha of t so this is our velocity vector field on curve so what are the vectors at each and every point so these are the velocity vectors. So the point of application are points on the curve and the vector part is going to be this velocity vector. Okay, So that is one very obvious example of a vector field on a curve. Now in general for any given curve alpha the velocity vector alpha prime satisfies the definition of a vector field on a curve. So for any given curve we can always find velocity at each and every point. So at each and every point we have a velocity vector so we can say that we have a velocity vector field. Okay, So velocity vector field. Now let's discuss the properties of vector fields on curve. Now consider uh, this vector field y of t. Now it has three components y1 of t, y2 of t, y3 of t so these are functions of uh, uh, the parameter t and the point of application is alpha of t so for any particular value of t this is the point of application and this is the vector part given as y1 of t y2 of t and y3 of t so this is the vector part and the point of application is alpha of t now if we want to write it down in a compact form then it is going to be equal to yi of t and ui of alpha of t. So this gives me the point of application and these are the coordinates and of course i varies from 1 to 3. Now let's see if given two vector fields on the curve then how can we add them. Now these kind of computations are going to help us in understanding the geometrical properties of the curve because we are going to use vector fields on curve to understand the geometry of the curves in R3. Okay, So how to add two vector fields? So let's say y of t is given as this. Now this uh, y1 is a function of t but we are uh, just to uh, simplify the notation we are just writing it down as y1. y1 u1 plus y2 u2 plus y3 u3. And similarly uh, the second vector field is given as z1 u1 plus z2 u2 plus z3 u3. Okay, So these are vector valued function or more precisely speaking these are vector fields. Okay, on this curve alpha. Then how do we add these two vector fields? So, so in a very uh, obvious and natural way we can add them by just adding their components. So y1 plus z1 u1, y2 plus z2 u2, y3 plus z3 u3. So that's how we add two vector fields. 
uh, for example if y of t is given in this way and z of t is given in this way then we can calculate this new vector field which is the addition of y and z in the following way so this is going to be equal to the sum of the components uh, which are uh, basically uh, coefficients of u1 so t square plus 0 u1 plus and then what about u there is no component of u2 here so it's it's going to be equal to 0 plus 1 minus t square u2 plus and then uh, this is going to be equal to uh, minus t plus t u3 so let's simplify this expression so t square u1 plus 1 minus t square u2 plus 0 u3 so that's how we add these two vector fields and uh, these are vector fields on some curve now given any vector field and once again we are uh, using just y1 y2 y3 instead of using y1 of t and then uh, y1 of t and then u1 of alpha of t so that's the precise notation but we are simplifying the notation and uh, we can multiply this uh, vector field with any real valued function f of t in the following way so we just multiply each and every component f y1 f y2 f y3 okay so that's how we multiply a given vector field with this real valued function so for example if given y of t and given this f of t then uh, f y is another vector field on the curve defined in the following way so this is going to be equal to so multiply the first component with t plus 1 divided by t u1 multiply the second component there is no second component coefficient of u2 is 0 and minus t multiplied by t plus 1 divided by t u3 and uh, we can simplify it so it becomes t into t plus 1 u1 minus t plus 1 u3 so that's how we multiply any given vector field with a scalar function now moving on to other uh, interactions between the vector fields so now we want to find out if we can calculate the dot product of any two vector fields on a given curve so the calculation of this dot product is once again very parallel to the dot product of two vectors so how do we calculate dot product of two vectors so multiplying their corresponding components and then adding them so that's exactly what we are going to do here so multiply y1 with z1 multiply y2 with z2 multiply y3 with z3 and then add all of these quantities so that's how we calculate the dot product of any two vector fields on a curve for example consider this uh, y of t now we can write down y of t in the following form so t square u1 plus 0 u2 minus t u3 and given uh, this z of t we can write it down in the following way so z of t is going to be equal to 0 u1 plus 1 minus t square u2 plus t u3 so how do we calculate this real valued function okay it is a real valued function because the output is going to be a real number so how do we calculate it so this is going to be equal to t square 0 plus 0 into 1 minus t square plus minus t into t okay so this is going to be 0 this is going to be 0 so this is going to be equal to minus t square so as you can see that the input is a real number the output is a real number so it's a real valued function of one variable uh, which is the dot product of these two vector fields now the next important operation that we are going to discuss uh, is the cross product of two vector fields and in this case as you can guess that the output is going to be a vector field so given these two vector fields written in this compact form we can calculate the cross product of these two vector fields in the following way so just following the definition of uh, cross product so the second row is y1 y2 y3 the third row is z1 z2 z3 as we have done in the case of vectors now what is the difference between this case and the case of vectors now in this case uh, this uh, uh, u1 depends okay so it varies as the value of uh, t varies so u1 of alpha of t to be very precise so this is basically u1 of alpha of t because uh, this is a vector field on the curve alpha and this is going to be y1 of t this is z1 of t and similarly the second column is going to be equal to u2 of alpha of t y2 of t z2 of t and similarly the third column so it depends on the parameter t so this top row 
is basically replacing i j k from our calculus because in this case uh, there is no i j k so at each and every point we have our own u one of p u two of p and u three of p so this u one of p u two of p and u three of p they uh, serve as our i j k in the usual sense now given these two vector fields we can calculate the cross product so this cross product is going to be a new vector field and we can calculate it in the following way so precisely speaking it is u1 of alpha of t u2 of alpha of t and u3 of alpha of t and uh, uh, the second row is going to be the components of y so it is going to be t square 0 and minus t the third row uh, is going to be the components of z so 0 1 minus t square and t now we can simplify this uh, so exactly that's how we calculate the determinants so this is going to be equal to uh, so u1 of alpha of t now uh, to simplify the computations i'm just going to write down u1 so this is going to be equal to 0 uh, minus minus t square so t into 1 minus t square and then minus u2 so the coefficient of u2 is going to be equal to t cube minus 0 and then the coefficient of u3 is going to be equal to t square multiplied by 1 minus t square minus 0 so i'm ignoring this zero so that's how we calculate the cross product of two vector fields now given any vector field on a curve we can differentiate this vector field in the very once again obvious way so take the derivative of each and every component and this u i of alpha of t is going to remain the same so it's just like saying that given any vector field so let's say this uh, this is y of t naught so which is uh, a vector with point of application alpha of t naught then its derivative is going to be another vector with the same point of application so this y prime of alpha naught is another vector with the point of application alpha of t naught and that's how we calculate this new vector field so the derivative of a vector field is a new vector field given in the following following way so for example if we have this vector field and we want to find out this new vector field which is the derivative of this vector field then it is going to be equal to y prime is equal to 2u1 minus 3t square u3 so that's how we calculate the derivative of this vector field and once again let me say that again this y prime of t is a new vector field on the same curve alpha of t and this uh, y double prime of t which we can calculate in the following way so it is going to be equal to minus 6 t u3 so it is another vector field on the same curve so we can say that for any given curve alpha which basically is not written in this example but we can choose any curve alpha and it will work for every curve so for any particular point we have this let's say alpha of t naught we have this vector y of t naught and at the same point we have another vector let's call it so basically it is y prime of t naught and at the same point we have another vector which is y double prime of t naught so with the same point of application we have uh, these three vectors so at each and every point of the curve we have three vectors so basically we have three vector fields y of t y prime of t and y double prime of t so uh, there are some properties of differentiation given to vector fields and two real numbers so the derivative of this new vector field a y plus b z is equal to a y prime plus b z prime and similarly if we take the product of two vector fields in other words take the dot product then the derivative of this new real valued function can be calculated in the following way which is y prime dot z plus y dot z prime and similarly if we have uh, this uh, multiplication of a vector field with a real valued function then it is going to be equal to so there is a derivative here so it is going to be equal to so just like uh, we uh, have this product rule so the derivative of first function multiplied by the second function plus uh, first function multiplied by the derivative of second function so that's how we calculate uh, the derivative of the product different products so dot product and the multiplication of a vector field with a real valued function now there is a one particular uh, vector field on a curve which uh, appears and which is of certain importance is the parallel vector field 
okay so if we have the same vector part and only the point of application is changing then it's just like saying that uh, we are having the same vector and then we are um, just moving it uh, and we are taking parallel vectors okay so the same vector part so we are just translating the same vector again and again at points on the curve okay so translating the same vector okay so so all of these vectors since the vector parts are equal so all of these vectors are parallel but the only difference is their point of application is different so uh, if the vector part is constant and uh, it can be written in the following way ci ui of alpha of t so we say that it is a parallel vector field because all of the vectors are parallel on this curve now uh, recall that given any curve alpha we can calculate its acceleration in the following way so velocity for any given curve alpha is a vector field and similarly the acceleration so acceleration is another vector field on the same curve alpha so here we can uh, just to emphasize the uh, importance of the point of application we can just write down alpha over here now these are certain implications of uh, these vector fields on curves so if alpha is constant then this happens if and only if this uh, alpha prime is zero now this alpha prime is not just the derivative this is basically a vector field on the curve and we are saying that this vector field is always zero at each and every point and the next property is if alpha is not constant and alpha is a straight line then this happens if and only if alpha double prime is zero so in other words this another new vector field which is the acceleration vector field is zero and a vector field on a curve is parallel if and only if y prime is zero if its derivative is zero so derivative is zero means uh, kind of when you integrate it then you are going to get constant so if the vector part of the vector field is constant then it is basically a parallel vector field now in this module we discussed this important concept of vector field on a curve and in our future discussions we will in particular discuss uh, some vector fields on the curve and these vector fields are going to give us geometrical information of curves in space